Welcome back to Brent Tang and Brent Barnett. Uh, today we have a special guest in the studio, Mr. Matt Alston. How you doing, Matt? Good. Happy to be here. So today we're building a rack for John Otto from Limp Biscuit. Matt's been working with uh, John for how long? Uh, just under a year. Okay. Okay. Brief. And um, they're about to hit another cycle, and uh, they need a rack. So tell us, uh, tell us kind of uh, what John's setup is like and what you guys have been using. Well, John's simplified his setup a lot. Two rack toms and a floor tom with the side snare. So how many cymbals are it's is he using? It's about nine to ten with some attachments. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of tripods, man. It's a lot of tripods. Isn't it? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> what's your idea as far as uh, a rack that we're going to do today? So, me and John have been talking. Everything needs to be a stealth, low profile, very clean, very minimal, no flamboyance, nothing, nothing other than functional and clean. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, stealth uh, has definitely become mm -hmm. the way to go these days. Um, you still get the benefits of using a rack, but it's really low to the ground. Mm -hmm. No more, no more fighting over space on the ground for with tripods with legs. <laughs> you know. Um, so uh, let's make something cool, man. All right, so what we're doing here is we've got rack toms that are gonna come right out of here. His cymbal's gonna come right here, but so the crossbar for all of his other cymbals. Uh, and then right here, China's gonna come out of this leg, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna extend it with another piece for, um, for the side snare. For the side snare. So back here, we've got a 20 inch bar because they don't really need a whole lot of height on this. He might, you know, put some electronics later on down the way. Give him the option to. 36 inch curved crossbar, another 36 inch curved crossbar. And the verticals are all 30 inch. We had to uh, cut this one down a little bit so um, it would allow more room for his rack tom so we could drop them. But then we have a no leg hi-hat stand that I actually took the EA100 right here, and um, I took the no-leg snare stand, like, base, and just found one lying around, added a little extender to it. So for the two rack toms, we got the 10 and the 12 right here, mounted out of a double tom mount. And we have um, a 30 inch vertical bar attached to the T-leg that we cut down a little bit so that we could put the, get the height exactly where we wanted it. Now, these two symbols, his 19 and 18 inch crash, we mounted to a 30, 30 inch bar on the outside. So we've got two vertical bars, one's holding the toms, one's holding the cymbals. But instead of having the cymbals come out of the top of the bar, we put like this little T right here so that um, we could mount both of these uh, mini booms directly to this uh, little horizontal piece. We're not, we, we don't wanna have anything on uh, the crossbars. Crossbars are just basically, we've got two big chunks. We've got the two cymbals, the two rack toms, and then we've got our hi-hat and the splashes right here with the, with the china. These are the two major chunks, and all they're doing is just being held together by the two 36-inch uh, curved crossbars. So cameras, you know, when they're filming John, they can shoot up in here and not have to go through any of the, uh, the clutter that's here with a lot of stands that's normally, that normally happens. I love it. I think uh, Matt's design yeah. is really kind of coming to fruition here with what he uh, what he sent me. So I think it's gonna be really cool.
this is pretty effing cool. Okay, so I think now we pretty much finished setting up John's uh, new rack. Mm -hmm. this, this looks really cool. It's very simple, um, but unique. Yeah, it's very clean. You know what I really like is that there's no clutter here. Yeah. Like you can see the shows drums. Off, shows off his drum kit. Yeah. So the hi-hat side of this, of this kit is definitely the most involved. The two rack toms were mounted off their own bar that was a custom sized bar from a 30 inch that we cut down probably about four inches, five inches off of. My, um, put two rack toms, the 10 and the 12, right off the front. Then the back is where we have most of our, um, our all our cymbals mounted off of this little T bar configuration right there so we can mount two cymbals off of it. Then basically we have the crossbars at the bottom are just there to hold the two chunks in place. Then the next chunk um, is where our china is coming out of the back leg. Then we have um, our little splash rail right here that we're using a, another T-bar, just a little longer than the one in the front, but we're using another T-bar to mount all three of his splashes. And I had to use the multi-angle adjustment clamps to get them kind of pivoted in the right area. Moving over to the far back right uh, hi-hat side, we've got another 36 inch bar and yet there's nothing, and still there's nothing on the bar. The whole thing is, is very low profile and discreet. It's very clean. And out of the back leg, we used an X-hat. He's got a song where he plays two, uh, two hi-hats on, on the left side. The snare stand, we decided to mount off of its own snare basket because the rack was a little far for us to put a legless snare stand and we didn't really want to have a bar coming off of it to connect it to the rack. This is one of the coolest things. This is the first time that we've given John a, a legless hi-hat stand. So next, we went over to the floor tom side. We just basically duplicated these two vertical uprights right here, the inside one for the 14, and then the outside one we're using to mount another 19 inch crash. And so the 46, we've got a 46 inch curved crossbar going all the way to the back leg, which is holding all of the other symbols. So the whole left side of his kit, um, crossbars are not holding anything. All they're doing is just basically connecting the big chunks together. And on the floor tom side, we have the um, 46 inch crossbar holding half of the symbols. So this side is a little bit higher and the hi-hat side is a little bit lower. So it gives it kind of a stair step look. Well, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching. We just built a new rack for John Otto and it was very simplistic, but functional and it looks really sleek. All of our ideas came out, which sometimes doesn't happen, which I mentioned earlier. But anyways, make sure you guys check this out with John taking it for a ride with Limp Biscuit all over the world. We'll see you next time.